Uh, welcome to uh, our three attendees so far, and uh, my name is William Wildman. I'm the Assistant Director of Admission at the Tulane School of Architecture, and I'm joined by some folks who are going to introduce themselves uh, here in just a second. Uh, just a few housekeeping rules before uh, we get started, some things to note. Um, just the general format, uh, we're going to have the Dean uh, introduce kind of the school, and then we'll have Cassius and John give you an overview of the Master of Sustainable Real Estate Development program, uh, and we'll finish out with a Q&A portion. Um, at the bottom of your screen or the window uh, that you're viewing this webinar, you should see a Q&A button. If you click on that button, it'll allow you to submit questions um, either with your name or anonymously um, that we'll answer at the end of uh, the webinar. So as you think of questions, as uh, questions come up uh, through everyone's presentation, uh, submit your questions there and then we'll be able to answer those uh, towards the end. Um, but I'll pass it over to Cassius at this time. Great. Um, thank you, William. Um, my name is Cassius Peeler. I'm director of the MSRED program and uh, have been here, I think, uh, six years now. But um, uh, this is the ninth year of the program currently, and uh, glad to have you all join us. Um, uh, I get, think if John Huppy introduces himself and then and the dean will kick us off. Thanks, Cassius. Yes, my name is John Huppy, uh, the assistant director for the real estate programs at Tulane and the master's program. Also an alumni of the program, uh, did the program starting in 2013 and graduated in 2014. So I think one thing that's unique about myself is just sharing the student perspective and appreciating how much I was able to get out of the program and love being able to be a part of career development, especially with students uh, during the program. Thank you. Uh... William, Cassius, John, uh, welcome you all uh, uh, attendees uh, to this uh, webinar. Uh, welcome to New Orleans, even if it is virtually. Uh, this is a, a gorgeous city full of history that you may know already and, and getting ready to enjoy in the, in the near future. This is a city that, that uh, surprised me uh, continuously. I came two years ago. It's a city with sense of humor, with, uh, with a beauty, with a culture, with music, uh, with nature, but it's also the paradigm of all the world's most pressing challenges, social and racial complexity, environmental crisis, economic disparity, uh, you name it. Uh, so let me introduce myself. I am the Dean at the School of Architecture, Iñaki Alday, Iñaki. Uh, I am an architect coming from Barcelona, where I keep my architectural office designing buildings and landscapes and, and urban plans. And why real estate is at the School of Architecture? Why it's so important for me, which I actually have uh, no expertise in real estate. I just have the experience of interacting with real estate uh, developers and understanding how important it is to have a good uh, real estate developer uh, pro uh, proposing a plan and moving forward. Uh, there's no remediation uh, in design for bad development. Uh, the setting of the rules, uh, that is what uh, development does, either in private, in public, or in private-public partnerships, is the, the set for success or for failure. That's why development drives the larger dynamics and that's why it's so important, at least I consider uh, essential, and I consider essential to be in a school of architecture, which is quite unique. There are, there are really few programs uh, that are at schools of architecture that are mostly uh, linked to business and finances, and this is not the case. This is, this is a real estate program that is focused in really uh, developing and building physically our cities and our territories. Uh, let me introduce you also to Tulane University. Tulane is the, is the smallest of the top American universities. It's one of the about 45 tier one research universities of the US and Canada. And being small, we are also very nimble, we are flexible and we are fast and we are collaborative. Very different to most other top research universities in the country that are much more rigid, much more strict and much more siloed. Uh, and, uh, and, and having the real estate program at the School of Architecture is a, is, a, is a good proof of that. Tulane is also a special university because of its origin. Almost 200 years ago, 1834, was founded uh, to fight yellow fever. We have never been a, an ivory tower. 
the School of Architecture is the smallest school, but it's one of the most special and central. We were instrumental in the rebuilding of New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. So we really work in real life, in, in, in challenges, in solutions, in, in engaging with the world outside, in engaging with the business, with engaging with the, with the dynamics that are going on uh, and that are part of how we are uh, evolving as society. Uh, why is important where we are uh, in New Orleans? We, we are a school that focuses in the, in the important topics of today and in the near future. It's clear that the way that we have been developing the, the, the planet is not sustainable uh, and we need to rethink how we are going to inhabit the planet in the next 20 or 30 years from now. And especially the most vulnerable territories uh, of the Delta of the Mississippi, for instance, where we are, or many other deltas or coastal areas or river areas in the world where are billions of people currently living, uh, where most of the production, the food and industrial production happens. So we have not only the opportunity, but the obligation in leading how we are developing our land, how we are developing our cities, and how we are doing this in front of the climate change and coastal and riparian crisis in, in, the, in the extraordinary process of urbanization that the entire planet is, is uh, enjoying or suffering, depending on where you are, and the challenges for social and environmental justice that all this uh, means. Uh, so mm, we have floods, we have events, we have pandemics, as we know, uh, development, the impact of the physical uh, construction of the city with the economic uh, uh, um, intersection is essential. And so this is, I understand from our perspective, this is a historic moment and a historic place also to become the real estate developers that will change how we are developing our cities and the territories. Uh, we are a school that has always been pride of educating excellent professionals, uh, professionals that are uh, that understand what's going on in the world, that uh, can immediately connect uh, with the world, can immediately have a, a, an impact, have a, a job, have a leadership position. And it's really also important uh, at the School of Architecture and Real Estate how we connect the areas. Uh, real estate, by definition, is very, very deeply connected to architecture and to preservation. Uh, existing fabric, as you all know, is, is one of the most important areas of, of, of real estate development uh, going on. So to be experts in your field is also to be a little bit experts in the related fields that interact uh, with developments. As graduate, this is a graduate program, so you are going to be pushed really hard. This is your life choice for professional life and we really expect uh, commitment and excellency. We have no doubt, and, and we have seen in our candidates over the years that the level of commitment is, is uh, absolute, and that's the level of harvesting of, of this commitment of excellence in, in education. Uh, you will get to know the building hopefully very soon. Uh, we are going to renovate the building. That will be a good opportunity to understand also economic dynamics in the construction linked to the development. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look at it later. And uh, well, we, you are now in the moment of making a, a big choice uh, where, what uh, you are going to study. Uh, you are probably looking at the environment where you are going to be. That is essential. We are being shaped by the environment. I can tell you, uh, being in New Orleans is, is, uh, makes you a, a different person somehow. Uh, this is a place where it's not only a, a, an extraordinary climate and landscape, but the cultural complexity uh, that is shaping us every day is really important the understanding of the social diversity and the challenges that we have as society is also that is paramount and it's it's sobering i have to say uh, after having moved here two years ago and uh, even at my age and my difficulty to understand new tricks i'm really learning a lot uh, the immersion in this complexity and this challenging and really really also enjoyable uh, environment is extraordinary and, and we see very clearly here what's the environmental urgency in which the world is now uh, facing. 
So it's very much uh, at this moment in graduate education is what kind of professional you want to be, what kind of developer you want to be. And this, this decision is, is about where do you become uh, this professional. As dean, uh, my expectations is that uh, you are going to be excellent professionals, uh, very well-rounded. This is very important for us. And with very high professional ethics, that is another essential component. Uh, developers with a very broad understanding of the field and of the, our society, not uh, people who are in a bubble. Uh, business is part of a larger uh, understanding of how we are moving as society. And, uh, and as I mentioned, uh, developers that are going to change the, the, the business as usual. Uh, that uh, is clearly that is not sustainable anymore and, and, and this is the field that has the larger impact much more than designers or much more than preservationists. Uh, so um, the built environment uh, we hope that is going to be one of the most important national topics for conversation and, and you as, as real estate developers uh, have a responsibility to, to bring this uh, to the public to be also intellectuals in that sense and, uh, and do it uh, in, in, a, in the golf coast. Uh, our proposal is do it in the golf coast, in the, in the place where things are really happening. Uh, when we, have in, we are in the face of, of seeing the complexity, the, the crisis and the opportunities that I was mentioning before. Uh, and here we know about all this. It's a really exciting place and really stimulating place to, to, to be innovative. So thank you for, for listening uh, to me. I'm going to pass the baton to Cassius Piller to talk about the specifics of the program. Thank you. Great, uh, thank you, Dean Alday. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. I have a, uh, a PowerPoint um, that we've set up and, and shared um, previously with our, um, uh, we have a virtual open house. Um, so um, we'll just run through that. I've updated some of it, obviously, um, and um, you met John and myself already. Uh, just a little bit more on myself. I'm a, um, I went to Tulane as an architecture student undergrad, uh, but, uh, but left and went to law school, and most of my professional work as an attorney before returning to Tulane uh, was in large-scale uh, public-private partnerships and, and housing redevelopments, um, so that's sort of how I came into this uh, and my focus, but um, We'll talk more about some of the other faculty and um, and the content of the curriculum in a minute. Um, the uh, quick overview of the, the program, uh, three semesters, uh, we do that in 11 months. It's, um, it's, it's a very intensive program, it's interdisciplinary. And, um, and in those three semesters, uh, we, we convey some basic skills, core skills that you need to be successful in the short term in your career. Uh, we help provide a perspective on, on the industry that can help you transform the field over time. And, uh, and we help you start to build a professional network so you can accelerate across that, that gap and have that impact um, very soon. Um, we do that in part because um, we're a practice-based program. It's a small program. So uh, again, the building that, that network and those relationships is important in addition to the skills. Um, but as, um, as the Dean mentioned, Tulane was founded uh, in response to this yellow fever epidemic, uh, that it's always been a very uh, practice-based uh, school and institution. Uh, our real estate program was founded a couple years after Katrina and I think has the flavor of how do we rebuild a city? How do we engage with issues that were there before Katrina for us, um, but that now have a much greater urgency and, uh, and I think a sense of responsibility, not just a uh, would it be, it'd be nice to solve some of these problems, but, but we really have a, a responsibility and an existential need to do so. And those, um, that includes uh, obviously the environmental concerns that were most kind of obvious uh, physically in, in, uh, in New Orleans at that time and are, and are still impacting cities around the globe, but, um, but also social, the social impacts and social inequities uh, that again predated that and were really exposed uh, through that uh, that experience um, and also uh, is a challenge that I think is shared with many cities around the globe. So, um, so our program, uh, all of our faculty, our adjunct faculty work in, in practice and, um, and our connections to the kind of industry and practitioners, including nonprofits and government uh, happens 
through largely through uh, a kind of an internship program, which is uh, optional, but is something that we offer in the fall uh, and have uh, done that in addition to the coursework. Those are paid internships that we help to set up. And then there's a directed research uh, course as a capstone research project in the spring, um, which is done in partnership with, with with folks out in practice. And both of those um, both of those experiences uh, also help students to individualize their their experience in the program and what they get out. So some students may have more uh, clear focus on a particular ge geographic region or a particular uh, project type, and um, and and even in a short program, uh, we want to enable that kind of individualized experience. Um, if you've gotten this far, you've probably already looked at our curriculum big picture. Um, we have, I uh, think of it as a kind of a finance and economics track. There's two courses in the summer on finance and economics, uh, and, uh, and then a uh, courses in the fall and, uh, and in the spring, and then a uh, kind of design planning and legal issues track is how I think of them. But those are um, other core courses that happen again in the summer, um, two in the fall, and then, uh, and then the kind of holistic uh, courses in the spring that include the research class and a case studies class, um, and then two two elective options. I've actually got um, our old elective options available. Those are still going to happen, uh, but we're developing some additional uh, electives in part because we've uh, expanded our faculty. So these are uh, images of our faculty right now. These are, um, I think they're all continuing. Um, we've had the same faculty for a number of years. I think that's a real strength of the program, the adjuncts are strong, uh, but getting people who really understand our students, how to communicate, uh, you know, I think teaching is a skill unto itself. So there's some great practitioners who don't really work out to be good uh, teachers, uh, I think, but, um, but we're, we're really happy with the, the diversity of the type of practitioners that we've gotten and, um, and continue to get. So, um, so they're, they're all hard at work learning more about uh, online delivery. That's not a new, an entirely new thing for us because uh, post Katrina Tulane was offline for a semester already so how to deliver content even when the university may be physically closed is something that uh, that our faculty have been preparing for and in many cases doing uh, you know for a number of years um, this is a different level of uh, online education in the summer uh, the university has expanded the research resources and support uh, for faculty to do that and uh, we've got some time but uh, they're enthusiastic about that change. Um, we also have recently hired uh, a new tenure track professor who was announced, I think yesterday, uh, officially. And um, he's coming from Harvard. He's a lecturer at Harvard uh, right now. And is, um, is, his research focuses on real estate and climate change. Uh, he's done a, a lot of kind of quantifying those connections. It's easy to talk about uh, theoretical connections, but he's quantified uh, the, the financial and other impacts uh, kind of visualizing what um, what people think they see or will see. So Jesse Keenan, Dr. Jesse Keenan, uh, will join us in the fall. And then we also have a, a Professor Daniela uh, Rivera Bryant, who's pictured here, um, second from the left at the top. Uh, Daniela is currently teaching uh, part time as an adjunct, but she's going to join us uh, full time. And uh, and both she and Jesse are going to offer some new elective options in the in the spring and fall. Um, in addition to our faculty, I mentioned these internships. Uh, so here's some examples of our uh, partnerships with uh, with local. I think these are all local um, agencies that have uh, public uh, public entities, uh, government entities, nonprofits, and and for profit companies, uh, where our students have worked uh, during the semester, where our alumni now work, and then uh, we have a wider range of uh, of research partners for the spring semester that that span the globe. Uh, really, depending on our students' interests and where those are. Um, the uh, kind of core skills that we focus on, I mentioned some of the coursework, but financial analysis, uh, analysis obviously, uh, leadership management, a kind of communication is really big. Storytelling is big. A lot of times I have uh, students come and say, well, I don't, I don't know that I'm prepared. I don't have a business background or I don't have a, an architecture degree, uh, but I, you know, I have a degree in marketing and communications. Well, that's a tremendous skill uh, for a developer who has a vision of something that doesn't exist and wants to make it happen. Uh, and that's uh, a large part of what we're, we're trying to get our students prepared to do. Uh, certainly critical thinking and writing, uh, project management is uh, something we've expanded election, elective options for. Um, and uh, entrepreneurship I'll return to in a minute. Um, but uh, all of these courses are uh, 
in the in the background of all of these courses is the sense of a, an environmental sustainability, uh, social sustainability, and, and social justice, and a, a kind of um, economic sustainability, obviously, as well. Uh, these are some of the degrees I mentioned, people coming with different backgrounds. About 30% of our students have um, you know, a, a kind of a background that's not either business or design planning. Uh, I'd say about 35% um, uh, have uh, design and planning, maybe 35% uh, business, but, um, but we have a range of students. And I think that that, uh, that diversity and interdisciplinary um, nature of our students is a strength and supports the interdisciplinary nature of real estate development overall, but certainly our, our curriculum. Um, people ask, what, what can I do with a degree? Where do I go? I think um, here's an, uh, these are some examples of uh, the, the, the job titles that our, our alumni get right out of, uh, out of the program. So project manager, financial analyst, those are pretty typical um, positions within real estate uh, companies and nonprofits that you might see. That's the kind of bulk of uh, maybe the 40% um, of our students take those kinds of, of, of titles, but, um, but we have students who do a range of, uh, of things in a different settings. One thing that students often learn is uh, they think that, oh, I can only go work for a real estate company, but it turns out there's a whole range of companies and, um, and nonprofit organizations and, and roles within government where real estate education and understanding is really important. One is the, the US State Department uh, has a whole real estate section of people who deal with uh, land around the world for US embassies and managing those properties and, and leasing land or buying land. And you know that's something I, you know, I hadn't imagined that there's a real estate department at the US State Department, but, um, but that sort of thing um, happens uh, a lot based on other students, other interests and opportunities. Um, now here's some examples, quick examples of the type of work, the range of work that our alumni have done. Um, so these are kind of larger examples, uh, two of them in New Orleans. One is a kind of master plan of Tampa, the waterfront in Tampa that an alum is working on. But, but that includes hospitality, commercial. Uh, there's a lot of our students who work in affordable housing or, or housing and mixed use development. I think that's uh, indicative of the industry, but it's also a focus of our program, the kind of equity issues that are addressed uh, through affordable housing. And uh, in the complex financing structures that are required to make that happen. So new markets tax credits, historic tax credits, low-income housing tax credits, opportunity zones now you may have heard about. Um, but our alumni also work at a different scale, so, which is important. Um, in a city like New Orleans, you can do a whole number of smaller projects and before you know it, have a real impact on a neighborhood. And, and that's what some of our alumni are doing, um, often as developers themselves. So John didn't mention this, I think, but he, he does his own development and has done that uh, in addition to his work, um, at least uh, initially leaving the, uh, the program, um, we have uh, about 20% of our alumni uh, do their own development or work for themselves in some fashion. Um, often those are smaller scale because you've got to be able to get ca capital, um, and, uh, but that's, uh, that's something that you can build over time and it's something a lot of our, uh, our, our students and our alumni uh, are doing, interested in doing. Um, speaking of capital, the uh, investment in the program, that's uh, tuition, is um, there's a, a the summer semester is a flat $16,000 on a per credit hour basis. It's a little bit cheaper than the, um, than the standard university fall and uh, spring tuition, but uh, these are the rates for 2020, 2021, um, and, uh, and for the three semesters. Uh, we have some uh, uh, small grants available through the program that, are, that are, don't require a separate application. Um, like I said, we have the internships and those are paid internships, kind of like work study and um, otherwise the financial aid office at the university and the uh, FAFSA is the federal application, um, the, sorry, the free application for federal student aid, maybe I'm getting that acronym wrong, but, um, but that's a standard form that you would need to fill out for uh, the kinds of um, federally backed loans that are often um, what support our students making this investment. Um, Quick application requirements. Um, the, these are pretty standard. We have a, a limited window here because of the events in the world. And so, you know, certainly reach out to us if you have some challenges. I think the letters of recommendation are often something that, uh, that takes some more time to get together and, uh, and we can, can work with you on, on that. Um, we've also had questions about the, the GMAT or the GRE, some standardized tests, which are uh, now offered purely online, but I think it can be hard to schedule those and, um, and certainly reach out to us if you haven't already taken the GRE 
and uh, and maybe don't already have a score and think that that would um, that might be a, a barrier to you. So um, a couple important dates at this point. Like I said, uh, May first is coming up very soon. Um, we have a small program by design. I expect to keep it that way, um, but we also usually have uh, one or two spots, and especially this year, there's a lot of people making different decisions about whether now they want to go to school or maybe they they have some other reason they want to change their mind about what they thought they were going to do. Um, so certainly talk to us uh, even past the May 1st date if that's uh, if that's appropriate to you, but um, but we do start the program on June 18th. Uh, we have an orientation, and then our classes begin online uh, June 22nd, and we run them in two uh, kind of four-week sessions, uh, four days a week, uh, two and a half hours uh, per class a day. So there's it's it's not as intensive as it as it is when it's in person in the summer, but it's still pretty pretty intensive. We'll go quickly through the summer and then get to the fall, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to to see everybody in person, um, or at least a number of people in person in the fall. However, we're committed to uh, kind of an online uh, option in the fall. We fully expect to be in person in the fall, but, uh, but if for some reason uh, you're not able to be here, um, and we will have an online option if that's required by any students um, in the fall as well. Our um, other information, just to con uh, contact, obviously we're doing this this call here and we'll ask some questions in a minute, but, um, but reach out to me directly. That's my cell phone number, um, especially given the timing. I welcome calls uh, from folks who are interested. And um, here's our other websites you've seen already and uh, appreciate your time. So I, you know, that's, uh, that's our kind of overview. I know we have some people on the phone who've already uh, been admitted and may have uh, questions that are more practical to than some folks who are, uh, engaging for the first time or, or re-engaging, I guess, um, but, uh, but we're available for, for questions and comments here. And um, John, maybe, uh, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add. I know we've done this together in the past, but uh, is there anything that you think is worth highlighting that I missed? Yeah, I think a lot of students, you know, at this point, you know, late spring, I think people are, are getting locked in. I think you're starting to think more about the curriculum and, and more about the research that could be potentially done while studying in the program. Could you talk a little bit more about the internships and when that timeline starts for potentially uh, pinpointing something to do and also for the directed research uh, for the spring? When does that conversation start? Um, yeah, those are good questions. And especially given... Uh, the you know what we think is going to happen in the fall, but I think everybody's learning new things all the time. Uh, I think the the internships uh, I'm committed to having some kind of internship options um, ideally in the fall. I think that obviously depends on uh, a lot of different factors. Uh, typically, there's a requirement that those be in an office. That's one of the the few requirements uh, that that I want to see and that the the school wants to support. Um, here, obviously, there may be some opportunities. I already had one student who's coming here next year. He has a connection to his uh, one of his state legislator, le legislators who is um, who has got some ideas about uh, development and uh, and responses to public health issues. And he wondered if he could perhaps do an internship with with him over the fall semester, even though that would be out of state. And I think um, you know that's the kind of thing that. Is we can have those individual discussions, and it's absolutely going to be possible this year. But my hope is that we'll have some in-person, uh, in-office ability to offer those internships in the fall, and if if not, uh, maybe we offer them in the spring instead, depending on uh, you know all kinds of factors that we can't foresee. But that discussion happens in the summer. Uh, really, students get here, and, and it gives us a chance to talk. It gives me a chance to talk with you and and hear more about your interests um, and uh, and your thoughts about what would be a good addition. Sometimes people want to go into a private sector role, but an internship is a useful way um, to gain some public sector experience that may be still valuable. So I think uh, having those conversations happens uh, typically in the summer, as John mentioned, and, uh, and those are set up so that when folks arrive, uh, typically would arrive um, the end of August, uh, they can go ahead and start those internships uh, right away. They're two days a week, typically 15 hours a week is the expectation. Um, so, you know, we'll just have to see how, how the, the details of individual um, opportunities uh, work out, but, um, but that's the basic structure. And um, you mentioned the, the directed research, which often kind of builds on that. Uh, that's those discussions. We start having them in the summer, but really more in earnest in uh, in the, the fall. And by um, you know by October, we should have a good sense, and ideally 
Um, my goal is always before, before Thanksgiving break, if you've identified someone and, um, and really got them as a partner who, um, who can help you uh, work on developing a topic that's of practical interest to them, it furthers your academic and professional interests, and um, something that, that the three of us talk about together, um, that usually enables you to come back in January and, uh, and start on that research in earnest uh, as well, and even, even doing some work um, over the break, which students often do. So that's the timing of those. Great, I've got two more things, Cassius. This one is uh, specific to the virus situation we, we have right now. One of the most important pieces of the summer is that field study trip uh, where we take students usually to, to Washington, D.C., and then either Philadelphia, San Francisco, or New York City, that tends to change from year to year. Uh, what are the contingency plans for that? And what also happens during that trip? So that, that's a great question. The, um, so that trip is, I think, very important. It's not, our, it's not part of the um, four credit courses. It's, not a, it's, it's part of the, the tuition, so it's included in that, but you don't, uh, it's not a class that you register for, but it is crucial to our um, experience overall, I think. And so we're committed to finding a way to, to deliver that experience. Um, obviously, it won't be in the summer, uh, but sometime in the fall, maybe at the end of the semester or, um, or early in, in January. Uh, that's really a discussion that, that we'll all have as a group uh, once, uh, once students arrive and we know more about what's possible and what people are comfortable doing. Um, maybe we will go somewhere different, closer to home, um, but, uh, but typically, as John mentioned, we've gone to Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia. Part of the point of that is to see some projects that at a scale that we don't see in New Orleans and often um, there's some, uh, some, some more substantial innovation, more obvious innovation uh, that, uh, that, that we either can't see here or isn't accessible. Um, it's responding to different climate issues um, and different political climate issues as well. Um, that includes public transportation. I think that's a really important experience of, for a lot of students of going to, um, to some other um, other cities and, and really using public transportation and seeing how that uh, connects to development and, uh, and value um, and equity. Um, so I don't know exactly where we'll go this year, but we still plan on having that trip. Um, we also typically go to the ULI Fall Conference. Uh, Urban Land Institute is an industry organization. Uh, this year their conference was scheduled in October in San Francisco. Um, I was excited about that. I'm part just today, uh, this afternoon actually before this call, uh, one of our former partners, somebody we visit with pretty regularly um, in DC, he just got named the director of the uh, Department of Housing for San Francisco. So the San Francisco mayor uh, just appointed him. He's gonna start next week. And I, you know, I, I sort of knew that might've been in the works and I was excited about going to see him. Uh, so if we can get to San Francisco in, uh, in, in the fall, obviously we'll do that. But, uh, but, but whatever the ULI does, uh, we'll, we'll look at um, either going to their conference, if it's some other location at some other time, um, or, or coming up with some other alternate uh, industry event that, uh, that helps our students connect to practitioners and, uh, and kind of see the larger picture that I talked about at the beginning. Great, and the last thing, Cash, is from me, uh, is less of a question, more of a statement, but usually one of the next steps is that we send out a welcome package in a few weeks includes a lot of information about, uh, you know, just getting ready for the program, getting information about the campus. Uh, one of those things that I would like to point out is uh, also a, uh, uh, basically a suggested reading list. And I think more than ever, than any other year, I think students probably have a lot of time right now to start preparing, start to get their heads engaged. And so I would encourage students, obviously we'll have that list sent out with the welcome package, but if any students out there who wants to get a jump on that, wants to, to see some lists of textbooks or, or readings that they should start to dig into now, uh, feel free to reach out to either myself or Cassius and we'll be more than happy to share some of those resources with you. Yeah, that's a good reminder. Actually, I see Charlotte, you, you're, you're on the call and um, we, uh, I'm gonna send that welcome packet out tomorrow. So two months before the start of classes, it includes a list of, uh, of, of textbooks that you could purchase and start to think about uh, ahead of time. Uh, it includes some other kind of suggested reading, both about New Orleans and, and about the real estate industry generally. And, um, and it also will have a link to a, uh, uh, an online Excel spreadsheet training class that we ask folks to do um, online every year. Uh, but this year it's also online. And, uh, and to come, uh, 
kind of with that uh, with that already completed. So um, so students will uh, current students will get the current applicants will get that shortly, and uh, certainly anybody new uh, or who's just interested, uh, we're happy to um, uh, to share that with you. William, do you have other are there other uh, key questions that you think I missed or that you want to want to address? I think you guys covered uh, all the bases. If uh, we don't have any other follow-up questions, um, a couple things that I want to note, um, again, just to highlight the, the upcoming application deadline for um, new applicants who are applying for the fall, we may first, um, with uh, decisions being sent out uh, by the 15th, I think is what you had listed, Cassius. And um, another thing is that this uh, session will be is being recorded and will be posted online. So if there's anything that you need to revisit for a reference, um, you can do so on our website. We'll have that posted by the end of the week. Um, we're also available for direct contact. So I know that a lot of you have been in, in touch with John and with Cassius, but if you have any logistical questions about the admissions process, if anything is giving you trouble uh, with our admission system, as we sometimes run into, um, you can always feel free to shoot me an email and uh, just let me know how I can help. Um, we're focused on you right now. Um, we're wanting to make sure that you have all that you need and uh, that you've got everything that you need to, to get here. Um, so just keep in mind that um, we're available uh, for those kind of discussions if, if we need to have them. But we appreciate you spending this time with us. And uh, we hopefully look forward to either seeing you here on campus, seeing you in the city of New Orleans, uh, or seeing you online sometime very soon. Great. Thank you. Thank you all for attending. Hope to see you soon here in person. Thank you.